I participated in November 2019 and got some feedback asking me to share a breakdown of my process. So in this little mini series, I'm going to be going over some of my more interesting shaders and my creation process. I'm going to be starting with the snow slash ice shader and I'll be showing you how I turn this into this completely procedurally. You saw the thumbnail, you know what this is. Little note before we get started, this tutorial makes heavy use of shortcuts in the Node Wrangler add-on, so make sure you have that enabled if you don't already. Also enable extra objects. So first thing is delete the default cube and add in a sphere. I don't like to use UV spheres since they use triangle fans to close off the poles. Instead we should use a quadrosphere, which comes with the extra objects add-on. So then you add mesh, select round cube and select quadrosphere from the tool options. This has an all quad topology for better subdividing. Then we want to set up an HDRI to get some nice lighting, so we're going to go to the Shader Editor tab, switch to World, highlight the World Shader and press Ctrl plus T. This will create the node setup for us and we just need to load it in an HDRI. I'm using Greenpoint Park from HDRI Haven, but any will work. The link will be in the description. Heading back to Object Shading and selecting our sphere will create a new material and now the fun begins. Since we're using displacement, the first thing we're going to want to do is enable displacement. You can enable this by going to the shader, down to settings, surface, and displacement, and set that to displacement only or displacement and bump. Or you can just press the N key in the shader editor to get to the same menu. So when I'm creating shaders, I like to start with the displacement maps for each individual element and material first, since often you can use one of those maps as is or with little modification for something else, such as ambient occlusion, roughness, or albedo. In this case, we're going to start with the snow. To create that lumpy snow look, we're going to use a few different noise textures at different scales. So we'll shift A, add texture, noise, set the scale to about a 40, uh, detail to about 2, and then I'll press Ctrl T to add in the mapping. Uh, for right now, we don't actually need the mapping node. So we'll select that, press Ctrl X to delete the node while keeping the connections. And then we'll uh, select the noise texture, press Shift D to duplicate it, set the scale to about 20. Uh, increase the detail a bit to about 4, and then duplicate that again, set the scale to 8. And this will approximate the uh, low, mid, and high frequencies of the noise. Then we'll plug in each of our noises to our texture coordinates. Box selecting all three noises, we can press Ctrl and number pad plus to add them together. Since the noises generate values between 0, black, and 1, white, we're going to be adding all three of them together. We're going to bring our total somewhere between 0 and 3, which we don't want. We want to bring that down to be between 0 and 1, so we can use math multiply nodes. If you press on the operation type, you can select the different type, but in this case we're just going to press M for multiply. You can also press A for add, S for subtract, etc. Now, ideally we want to set these all to a one third, however I found increasing some of these noises gives it a, a nicer look. We can also increase the contrast with a color ramp node by bringing the handles in a little bit. It's all about experimentation and tweaking to get a nice end product. So what we've got now is our displacement map for the snow, and we want this to displace our mesh. To do this, you need to be in cycles with the experimental feature set enabled. You need to add a subsurf modifier. Uh, we can just press, in this case, Control and 2, which will add a subdivision surface with level 2 onto it. We then go to the modifiers tab and check adaptive. So what this does is it uh, adaptively subdivides our mesh based on the final render resolution. And this will get us the detail we need to displace our mesh. So now we'll add a displacement node and plug in our map into our, the height section. You can see right now this is much too strong so we're going to set the strength down to about a 0.5 and change the mid-level to about 0.1 so that the snow surface remains roughly where the object surface is. And we'll add another multiply node in line to bring it down a bit more. An easy way to clean up and organize your node tree is to use frames. So you can box select the nodes you want to frame and press Ctrl F which will frame them and then you can press F2 right away to rename that frame. You can also box select a row or column of nodes, press Ctrl W and go down to align nodes. You can also use Ctrl equals, however my hand is already next to W, so I just use that. Alright, so now we got our general shape for the snow, however it's looking a bit too much like plastic. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is increase the roughness a bit so it doesn't look too much like wet snow. I found 0.6 to work well. Then we're going to enable subsurf, so that's going to allow the light to scatter off the individual flakes and give us a more realistic look. So right now this is looking a bit pinkish, like a ball of skin or flesh or something, even though we have white set as our subsurface color. This is because the radius is how the light scatters throughout the object, and you can see it's a purple, which signifies a vector of an XYZ value, but it's essentially an RGB. Right now, you can see we have way more red than green or blue, which gives us that pinkish color. You can set them manually, or you can use a RGB node. 
and set this to the color we want. I found a about a 0 0.2, 0 0.35 and a 0.5 to look nice. However, feel free to use whatever colors you like, uh, lower the saturation if it's too blue for you. Again, it's just a matter of uh, tweaking and experimenting to find what you like. Once we've got it tweaked and set up how we like, I'm going to turn off subsurface scattering for now because it can really slow down the viewport. We're almost done with the snow, but there's uh, one more thing I want to add. Uh, while I was looking at reference, I noticed there's like sort of a shimmer, uh, sparkly effect of the snow as the flakes line up with the light sources and reflect it. To add this, we're going to use a Voronoi texture and set it to end sphere radius. We're going to crank the scale way up. I found like between 4 and 600 works nicely. Now we're going to plug this into a color ramp node. The handle squashed way in to give us that sparkle pattern we're looking for. We can then plug this into the clear coat input on the principal shader to give us a little bit of extra reflection, emulating the snowflakes. It's a subtle touch, but it's the little things that really help with the realism. Speaking of realism, right now this is just a static mask, but as the camera moves around, the angle of incidence will change, which means our reflective bits should be jumping around. Now we can achieve this by changing the texture to 4D, which will give us a W value, or evolution over time value we can play with to give us that shimmer. Now we could just keyframe this to animate over time, but I want to use a driver in this case. A driver is basically a small snippet of Python code that will give us a value. Uh, one way to add a driver is to just use the pound sign and type a simple code. For example, we could use frame divided by 10, which will take the frame we're at in the animation, divide it by 10, and output that value. In this case, I want to use the location of the camera since as that changes, the snow shimmer should dance around. An easy way to do this is to go over to the camera's object settings tab, right click the camera's X location and select copy as driver. Then we can right click and paste as driver into the value node. Now as the camera moves on the X axis, W will become whatever that value is. Uh, we want to use all three axes though, so we will right click and select edit driver, then add two more variables. We can hover over the input field with camera, press ctrl C to copy, then hover over the other two variables and press ctrl V to paste. We'll do the same for the path. This shortcut can be used anywhere in Blender and it's a very handy shortcut. You can also press backspace to reset any value to its default. By default, it's set to average, so it's going to average through three variables. However, we want this set to sum, so we have a constant linear motion as the camera moves. Right now, all three variables are the same. They are the X value of the camera's location. So we're going to change the second and third variable to one and two respectively. So that corresponds to the Y and Z axis. If I switch over to Eevee, you'll see as the camera moves, the uh, sparkling will dance around and get the effect we're looking for. But the effect looks a little too strong right now, so we're going to add in a math multiply and multiply it by 0.1 to bring that value down a bit. So now that we got our snow material pretty much done, we need the ice material which will show through beneath the snow in the cracks. Now we could just use a glass material, however I'm going to be using a pre-made node group I have. Taking a look inside, you can see it's not too complicated. Basically it's just taking the camera and shadow ray information and performing some maths on those along with the ray length info, which we run through a color ramp node with the colors we want. What this is basically doing is taking the rays that enter the material and giving them a color based on the depth they travel, starting from the right side of the color ramp moving to the left. These can be adjusted to give the ice, ocean, pool water, whatever color you want. We are then adding a small amount of noise as a normal roughness to break up the surface a little bit. I found a roughness of about 0.4 to give it a nice look. If we scale the object up and add a Suzanne inside, you can see what effects this has. So that's pretty much it for the ice material. Now we just need a mask to mix between the two. For this, we're going to use another Voronoi texture, but we're going to set this one to distance to edge, which will give us that crackle pattern we're looking for. However, right now the lines are much too straight for what we want, so we can add in some noise to the coordinates by using a color mix RGB set to add, then add in a noise texture onto the original coordinates. This will give us a more chaotic or orderly structure to the crackle pattern depending on the factor you use. I find a factor of about 0.1 to work nicely in this case. Next, we'll run it through a color ramp to increase the contrast. We want the black to just barely bleed out from the center to give it a smoother bottom to the cracks. We can then take our snow height map and subtract this from it to cut into our displacement map. We'll run the output from that into another color ramp to increase the contrast even more and use this as our mix factor. Full black is 0 and full white is 1 and in between is a mixture between. So now to mix these two nodes together we can just select both of them and press Control number pad 0. We can then plug this into our mix factor. 0 means it'll be using the top input and 1 means it'll be using the bottom input. So you may need to swap the inputs by pressing Alt S. Next all we need to do is turn back on subsurface and we're pretty much done. The nice thing about using this procedural approach over textures is the infinite customization and the fact that you do not need to UV unwrap. 
If we add in a few different meshes, we can apply this material to all of them by selecting all of them and then shift selecting the one with the material we want, pressing Control L to link and then selecting link materials. We're also going to link the modifiers since this material requires a adaptive displacement. So I went back and tweaked some of the nodes to get a nicer result. All of the nodes are the same, they just have slightly different values to achieve this result. I'll have this exact node tree available for download down in the doobly-doo if you want it for yourself or just to poke around a bit. I've also grouped it into a single customizable node group for greater flexibility if you want to support me and the free content. I hope you learned something in this video. This is a little bit more advanced than a beginner tutorial, but if you've made it this far and have an idea of what I was talking about, then you're well on your way to creating your own shaders. It's really not as hard as it looks. So I guess it's time for end of video supplication. Won't get too much into it. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, bell, all that jazz. If I miss something, or if you got a suggestion for a topic of video or a shader you want created, please leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.